Hello and welcome to our presentation. My name is Niall and presenting this vlog with me is James, Joshua and Josh. We are going to be looking at net present value, looking at the process and also looking at a case study. As well as this we also wish to evaluate the positives and negatives of net present value. We will also be looking at how to apply it in a business format and we will also give you a task to participate in. We hope you find this useful. What is net present value? Net present value is one of the three forms of investment appraisals, along with average rate of return and payback period. Net present value is also one of the two discounting techniques. Daniel Kirk defines net present value as the difference between the present value of cash inflows and the present value of cash outflows. Why would a business use net present value? Net present value gives a fair valuation of the value of money to a business. It's usually used in a business format in capital budgeting in order to analyse and review the possible profit, profit to be made on a new investment or project. Its main purpose is to give a business a more accurate valuation of what their cash will be worth in the future. Because net present value allows a business to see if an investment will be profitable in the future, it also allows a business to determine if that same investment would be more lucrative elsewhere. The process of working net present value out is quite simple. In order to work net present value, we need two key sets of figures, one being your business's projections in terms of valuation and a set of discount factors. With these sets of figures, you now need to set up tables to put your projections in, you need the years the period wanting to be measured in on the left. Next, we want the expected cash flow slash incomings for those years. After this, we'll put the discounted cash flow and then finally the cumulative cash flow. So, you can easily enter the cash in and out for that year into the table. To get the cash value for that year, we times the cash in value by the discount factor. As you can see here in the example by the side, we times 10,000 by 0 0.85734, bringing the figure to £8,573.40. Finally, we add this amount to the cumulative cash flow. This reflects how much money we have made back off the initial investment. We just repeat this process throughout until we're finished off, for how many years we want to figure out. Then we choose the project with the most amount of money and the cumulative cash flow. What can we compare net present value to? So, having discussed what net present value is, we now need to look at what it can be compared to in a business-like scenario. Net present value is similar in many different aspects to average rate of return and payback period. Here's how we can compare them. Average rate of return comparison. Firstly, we will compare average rate of return. We must define average rate of return. Average rate of return is a type of metric used in capital budgeting, which measures how profitable future investments will be for a business. Average rate of return calculates the return of a project generated from the net income of a proposed investment project. The return is shown as a percentage. Differences and problems with average rate of return compared to net present value. There are many key differences we need to consider between net present value and average rate of return. Average rate of return assumes that all cash flows within a business are reinvested into a project at the same discount rate that they were put in. This is a major issue with the use of average rate of return, as discount rates are always changing in finance. Why a business would use net present value over average rate of return? Net present value does not assume that the discount rate always stays the same. Therefore, a lot of businesses will choose to use this method during a projection, as it gives the business a more thorough idea of projection rates. Therefore, to summarise here, net present value would be the method to choose. Payback period comparison. Secondly, we will compare payback period. We must define payback period. Payback period is a certain period of time required for a business to recover its expenditure in terms of profits or savings in a certain investment. Differences and problems with payback period compared to net present value. There are again many key differences we need to consider between payback period and net present value. Some see payback period having some key weaknesses compared to net present value. Unlike net present value, 
payback period, unfortunately, doesn't take into account the rise of inflation and the cost of capital. Payback period will presume that £1 today will be the same worth as £1 tomorrow. However, this is not the case due to inflation. Another weakness seen with the payback period method is that the method ignores the cash flows beyond the time horizon. This is a big issue as the cash flows may be huge and have a major effect on the overall projection of a project. Net present value has its problems as well. The whole method lies on assumptions. If a business's estimates are off, a business won't know if the project is a success until its completion, which could turn out to be very unprofitable. Net present value gives importance to the time value of money. The obvious advantage of the net present value method is that it takes into account that money will be worth less in the future than what it is today due to external factors such as inflation. In the calculation of net present value, both after and before cash flow over the last one of the projects considered, the net present value method also tells us whether an investment will create value for a company or the investor and by how much in a monetary value. This means that when using net present value you can see how much your investment will be worth at by the end of the project. Net present value also helps in maximising the firm's value. It takes into consideration the cost of capital and the risk in making projections about the future which are essentially just an educated guess. In general, projections for a short period of time are more accurate as it is more likely that less external factors can have an impact and affect the eventual figures. Cash flows that are projected further into the future have less impact on the net present value than more predictable cash flows that happen in earlier periods. The disadvantage of net present value is that it may not give the correct decision when the projects are of an equal life. In addition, the net present value method is not useful for comparing two projects of a different size because the net present value method results in an answer, which is a monetary figure. The size of the net present value output is determined mostly by the size of the input. It is also prone to forecasting errors. In order to forecast the project's cash flows to calculate its MPV, a business makes various assumptions. The longer a project's expected life, the harder this becomes. For example, a two-year forecast might be fairly accurate, whilst the longer project over, say, 10 years is essentially a guess. If a project's actual cash flow turns out to be less than your estimates, you could lose money overall on your investment. A further disadvantage is that it relies on a discount rate. Using the net present value method requires you to estimate a project's discount rate. This is typically based on a project's risk and interest rates of other investments which means that this is often difficult to calculate an appropriate discount rate. Small changes in interest rates can significantly affect the project's MPV. If you use an inaccurate discount rate in your analysis, you might find an incorrect decision, such as to invest in an unprofitable project or pass on a profitable one. So now we move on to our case study. A new group of investors have brought Bournemouth Football Club for £200 million. They wish to make their money back via shirt sales and direct any form of revenue into the club. The investors see three ways of making back shirt sales. These being... Project A. Sign a star player in the first season to accumulate large sales to begin with, which will then slowly die down. Project B. Sign a young player who has the potential to be a world-class player in the future and will then bring in large shirt sales in the foreseeable future. Project C. Sign average players throughout, bringing in a consistent amount of shirt sales. The investors wish to use net present value to base their investments off, and notice the discount in the value of currency will be 8% year by year. Please identify which project the club should follow. If you go and set up the tables as we did previously, we can figure out the discounted cash amount. Please pause the video to set up the tables needed. So now hopefully you have the discounted cash flow values. If not, they are here themselves. All you need to do now is add them to the cumulative cash value. Again, you can pause the video to do this yourself. So as you can see, we have the final cumulative cash values for each of the projects and see clearly that Project A is by far the best project as B does not turn over a profit at all and Project C makes half the amount of Project A. This study was just an easy way to see how scenarios of net present value can be applied 
and how an organisation will come over a decision over the amount made. This could be compared to payback period or average rate of return to make a better decision on what the organisation needs. But in this case, if a business wants the highest return of valuation down the years, then net present value is the best capital investment appraisal to follow. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of net present value, how to use it, and its disadvantages and advantages. We hope you found this useful. So, from all of us, thank you for listening.